so yeah, you know, let's just walk around. We're chilling. Casual. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you can already see how it's just gonna... Yep, look at that. And... Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. We got up to 1 million parts before it just froze and it gave up on me. It's not even letting me click anything right now. Whether that will make it worse? Yep, yes it will. Yes it will. Oh my god. Whoa. I did actually- I actually didn't expect it to be this bad. Holy. Alright, so I don't know about you guys, but in my entire time playing Roblox, I've only really crashed like maybe three times. And I've been playing this game for like over like, I don't know, like eight, seven years now, right? So I've been playing for a really long time and yet I've never actually had a crash. Now, this is because, you know, a lot of the games that I played were big games and, you know, they, they were well optimized for, you know, lower devices. Um, and then I got a better device, like I have a good MacBook right now. So, you know, I've never really crashed because of my hardware or because the game was poorly coded. But then this left me wondering, right? As a coder, right? I don't really develop games, but like I work on other people's games sometimes. It left me wondering, how crash-proof is Roblox, right? Like, what would we have to do to actually crash Roblox? What are the limits of this engine? Because I've, like, I'll be honest, I've seen some huge games on here, right? Especially that, like, game called Frontlines, which is, like, this, like, you know, highly realistic FPS game on Roblox. Like, I, I played that game on my phone. Right, albeit it's an iPhone 16 Pro Max 1 terabyte, right? But, like, but still, that game surprised many people, including me a little bit, right? Because, like... A lot of people thought that that just wasn't possible in Roblox, right? But every single day, or I guess not day, but every now and then, there is the occasional game that just seems to have a lot of cool stuff and highly realistic graphics that kind of makes people wonder what Roblox is, you know, actually capable of. So, you know, this video goes out to every developer who wants to cram their game up with just a bunch of features, and also just goes to anyone who's just curious to see how much Roblox can actually take before it just starts crashing completely. Now, I will admit, the problem with something like crashing is that it is device dependent, right? So right now, I am on a, I believe like a 2020 M1 MacBook Air, which isn't the best MacBook. Like if I had, you know, the latest MacBook with the amazing chip and or whatever, or if I had like a high-end gaming PC, like I'm sure that it would withstand more things before crashing. But honestly, I feel like me having a slightly older MacBook is actually better for the average person because I don't think the average person has like an amazing high-end PC, right? I, like I do think the average person has a, you know, fairly average setup. And the 2020 MacBook, honestly, I would say is above average when it comes to running stuff. So this is still a good machine to run this test on. But okay, enough rambling. Let's start off with um, one of the simplest tests. And that is how much parts can we spawn? Now, in case you don't know, somehow, this is what a part is. Just, I don't know, it's just a thing. It's like a cube or whatever. Every Roblox game has this. I mean, I mean, the spawn location, the base plate, these are parts, right? So there you go. What I'm curious about is I want to run uh, two different tests, right? So so what, what this test is going to do is we're going to basically incrementally add more and more parts and then see how many parts we can even handle before the game just completely crashes. And the two tests that I want to try is, number one, I want to see whether there's any difference um, spawning parts all in one location. So like all the parts are going to be inside one another versus having the parts like um, spread around. So having the parts be in their own unique position. So I'm curious if that, you know, will make any difference on how many parts we can spawn before crashing. And the other thing that I'm curious about is, does looking at the parts worsen the lag? Like, let's say we're lagging out because of a huge amount of parts. If I look away from the parts, will that decrease the lag? Because it should, right? But I, I am just curious to see whether that will work or not. So, okay, what we're going to do is I'll make this in a local script inside of starter player script, right? And I'll just say, um, while task.waits, um, let's say every 0.1 seconds. Or actually, no, every, every 5, sorry, 50 milliseconds. Every 50 milliseconds, I'm just going to say um, local new is going to be equal to instance.new parts. We're going to say new dot anchored is equal to true, meaning that the part is not affected by gravity. Um, we're going to say new dot position is going to be equal to uh, vector 3 dot new 0, uh, 5, 0. So it's going to be um, at meaning that it's going to be five studs above this spawn location. So five studs is like it's going to be like around here or something, right? Um, and then I'm just going to say new.parent. So we're going to actually add this part inside of the workspace. And to not clutter up the workspace, I'll just make a folder for it. So parent is going to be workspace, um, wait for child, folder. Uh, and then the other thing I'll also do is I'll just say print um, 
and I want to print the number of items inside of the folder. So I'll say workspace, wait for child folder, uh, get children. So we're going to get the amount of children inside of the folder, and then the hashtag in front of that just returns the number of items inside of this table. So if I were to play the game right now, um, let's see. Okay, 20, 30. Now I will note this isn't incremental, obviously, right? But um, okay, we're at 100 parts now. And yeah, like I can feel it lag out a little bit. It still seems fine, honestly, I'll admit. Honestly, yeah, if I look away, there's not much of a difference. Okay, how about this then? Let's let's just remove this uh, the 50 milliseconds. Let's just make it run as fast as it possibly could. Okay, so if I play the game right now, okay, that okay, that, that's a lot that's a lot quicker. But yeah, there's still no real visible effect for me. Like, okay, yeah, okay, the frame rate is going down a little bit. Okay, yeah, yeah. If I look away, it seems to be a bit better. But yeah, like, it, it is lagging a little bit, but like, I don't know, it, it, it still seems okay. Like, there's no big performance dip. And we're already at, like, nearly 2k parts, right? Oh, there we go, look at that. But alright, you know what, honestly, this is too slow. Instead of what I'll do is I'll just say local count is equal to 1, and I'll take all of this, and I'll just say 4i is equal to 1, comma, count. And I'll just explain what this does in a bit. We're going to do all of this, and then we're going to say... Actually, wait, sorry. Let me, let me just add this here. And then we're going to say count times equals 2. So what we're doing here is we're making a loop, right? So um, you can ignore this line. Effectively, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do this ho however many times count is equal to. So at first, count is equal 1. So it's going to do this once. Then it's going to multiply whatever the count is by two right so 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 the next time count is going to be two so now it's going to uh do this two times and then it's going to do this four times and and eight times so every single time we loop it's going to add um twice as many parts to the folder and because we're going to do this um i will set this to be one second because otherwise it, it would just fill up with parts too quickly so okay you know let's play the game we have one now we have three now we have seven 15 okay good 31 so yeah, you know, let's just walk around. We're chilling. Casual. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you can already see how it's just gonna... Yep, look at that. And... Yep, there we go, there we go. Look at that, look at that. If I look away... Oh yeah, if I look away, look, it's fine, right? But then if I look at it... Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Alright, so it is at 500,000 parts. And that's, that seems to be the limit for Roblox as of right now. Okay, so we got up to 1 million parts um, before just froze and he gave up on me all right so um it's not even letting me click anything right now it seems to have stopped and it's giving me an error but i literally cannot click anything what the hell all right so roblox is performing so terribly that i, I literally cannot even like it's not letting me click anything i can't i can't even close the roblox studio so we have to force quit it all right so you know new project i just quickly rewrote this script and what i think we can do now is instead of doing this stuff incrementally because that clearly causes a massive crash we could keep doing the while loop but then just also keep this loop right so instead of adding just one part we can add two parts or three parts or four parts or whatever so yeah let's do 100 parts every time yeah so we're up to over damn already yeah so as it seemed last time getting up to a million parts literally renders everything un un unusable however as you can see here when i'm not looking at the parts it's actually it actually smooths out a lot the moment i actually bring them into my vicinity though that's when like more issues begin happening right but then when i don't look at them there's still some lag but it's kind of smoother right but okay that's that at seventy thousand parts what i'm curious about though is what if we set anchored to be false which is, it is by default right so now the parts should be affected by gravity which means that now they should actually start calculating like movement and everything like physics right so i'm really curious about whether that will make it worse yep yes it will yes it will oh my god whoa i did actually i actually didn't expect it to be this bad holy yeah so when they're not accounting for movement uh, we can get up to like 70,000, 1 million whatever it, it caps out not caps out but it, it's this bad and we haven't even reached 2,000 parts wow I'll just, I'll just set this back to be true. Another thing that I'm really curious about also is, what if we set the parts um, can collide property to be false? And also it's can touch property to be false. So can touch is equal to false. Because what these two do, they're on by default, is that this checks whether the part has collision, and this checks whether the part is actually able to be touched. However, the problem with that though is that they kind of expect for the part to have some collision, so they like look out for that collision. Like They always have checks to see whether the part is colliding with another part. 
At least that's how I believe it works. So I am just curious, if I set both of these to be false, will it be any better? And let's actually, you know, you know what actually we can do? Let's set this back to be uh, false, okay? So we'll see whether we can actually get above this number. And I'll also set this to be 50 just so we have more time to adjust ourselves. So yeah, play the game uh, and let's see. Interesting, so they're falling, right? And... Interesting, yeah, yeah, so look at that. Look, yeah, 10, yeah. So when we're not accounting for collision, it actually allows us to go a lot. That That's so interesting. So yeah, it seems as though the main issue before was just the fact that it had to calculate all the movement and so it just had a really hard time doing that. But when it doesn't have to do that, I mean, it's, it's still laggy as hell, obviously, but like, yeah, we're getting up to pretty high numbers here. Okay, and the last thing that I'm really curious about is what if we just say, um new dot transparency is equal to one so this will just set the part to be fully invisible so if the part is fully invisible will it still lag or will it not because i'm really curious about that okay yeah it's it still seems to be lagging um i'm not too sure if it's better or not but it doesn't seem to be as bad as before or maybe i'm just stupid i don't know but it, it does seem to me like when when they're invisible it's not as bad as when they're actually like visible so okay then, from this experiment, what we've learned is that uh, adding parts incrementally does, is not a good thing. We've learned that movement is actually a really big thing um, that Roblox needs to calculate. So when movement, when collision is involved, it suddenly becomes a lot more laggy. And just the parts by themselves, Roblox can handle fine. So yeah, it seems as though if you're trying to have games with a bunch of moving parts, um, probably also at the same time, try to make it so that the player does not have to render thousands of parts at the same time. That, that seems to not work out that well. But a part that is anchored and doesn't have to account for collision um, or movement um, seemingly is fine. So you could probably have like a couple like 10,000 parts um, of that nature. So yeah, that actually is pretty interesting to me. Like I, I knew that movement was a big thing for Roblox, but the fact that it's so huge that like it nearly capped out at like 2000 it, it does say something that's pretty interesting all right the next thing that i'm gonna do is i want to summon an explosion okay so we're gonna say instance.new explosion now explosions don't have any of this stuff they don't have anchor they don't have can collide they don't have can't touch they do have position though what i want to do i'll be honest is i want the position to be somewhat randomized like i don't want the position to just be in one spot so i'm gonna set this to be math.random uh let's say 25 to 25 or sorry um negative 25 to positive 25 and i'll set z to be the same um as for y i'm gonna set it to um minimum 5 maximum 50 and it's okay if we do it like this uh let's see how it's gonna work oh interesting look at that 60 70 80 90 it, it is going to cap out at and uh, yeah because explosions destroy themselves after a while Okay, yeah, so now it's around 75, 80 explosions. Honestly, that's actually pretty cool. It's making it's making one explosion practically every frame, right? Because that's how it works. But that actually, it actually, yeah, I mean, it's kind of laggy, sure. But my game still is running pretty fine. And yeah, look, now it's up to 100, right? So because it's running every single frame, it means that my frame rate has actually improved. And now it can be 100. And then if I look away, let's see, let's see what happens. Uh, let's see, if I look away... What the hell? Yeah, look at that. Yeah, the moment that I look away, look at that. It goes up to 1, 170, 160. What the hell? So yeah, when it comes to explosions, looking away makes a huge difference. And then if I look back, yeah, yeah, see, yeah, it, yeah, it starts dropping back. Yeah, 120, um, which is still really good. 120, fr 120 frames is huge. But all right, let's let's do it like this, okay? I'm gonna say local count is equal to one. So we're gonna do we're gonna do this thing again, okay? Local count is equal to one. I'll set this to be count. However, instead of incrementally multiplying this, I'm going to make... I'm just trying to figure out how I should do this. Let's do it like this, okay? Let's set this to be one second. And I will say count plus equals one, okay? So every second, we're going to summon a new explosion. Or actually, no, I mean, nah, should we do it like this? Because what I'm thinking is we could do another while loop. The problem with that, though, is that then this while loop will just not run. So, okay, let's try this then. Um, task dot spawn and then let me make a function i'm actually curious let me see if this works while um task dot wait one second do count sorry counts plus equals one and here let's also print the count the reason why i'm doing it like this is because task dot spawn you could think of it as like it almost makes a new script 
for this uh, piece of code. Which means that this while loop and this while loop are almost running on like two separate threads, right? Because the problem is if we don't use task.spawn, they will they will run on the same thread, which means that the code goes from uh, top to bottom. So if it goes to this while, it will just be here forever, right? And it will never get to this while loop. So we need to try and run both at the same time, which is where this task.spawn thing actually comes in. But let's actually see, right? Um, okay, it's printing one, two, three. Oh yeah, awesome. Yeah, so it works. Great. <laughs> Damn, wait. All right, uh, small issue. I, I guess we, we should probably um, try and change the explosion uh, thing. Uh, let's see, this destroy joint radius percent. Yeah, let's set that to be zero. I, I don't really want uh, the explosions to actually hurt me. And what we can also do is we can, let's actually just move the spawn location just over here, okay? Like so. So, okay, if we play the game, um, let's see. So I'm not looking at them, right? Oh yeah, look at that. Interesting. We're up to nearly a thousand explosions, but, but my game is still running fine. So everything is still running fine. But now, if I happen to... Okay, let's just slowly move our camera, okay? Towards the zone. Okay, 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 let's see. So I'm looking at them right now, right? Oh, interesting. It's it's actually not as bad as I thought. Is is it is it seriously, like, okay with me looking at this much explosions? But actually, a, a funny thing. Notice how... Yeah, notice how quickly they're going down, right? Because because my frame rate is seemingly also going down. So because of that, um, the, the, the amount of explosions is also going down. But then if I happen to now look away... Yeah, yeah, look at that, look at that, look at that, it just, it just, it just shoots up. Because my frame rate is also going up, right? So, okay, then you know what, let's, let's actually do the thing that I was against. Let's, let's multiply this by two, okay? I'm gonna multiply this by two every one second. And let's see, 4, 8, 16, let me look at it. I'm um, 32, 64, so we're fine right now, right? What the hell? So, yes, yeah, so right now it's just black smoke, oh my god. Oh, let me look away, let me look away, no, 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 damn it, wait, wait, stop, 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 stop. All right, uh, once again, I can't click anything, unfortunately. Uh, okay, there we go, I'm back. Okay, great. So, okay, what seemingly happened is we got to this much explosions, and this this is the count, I believe. Yeah, so here it says local script 16, which means line 16. So line 16 is count, and line 17 is how much explosions there were. So this was count, and this was how much explosions we had right before my game nearly crashed very interesting okay so yeah it does seem like this is this is very interesting to me because you never really even need this much explosions like realistically you'd only maybe have at most like a hundred explosions on screen at once like i, I really don't see I, I i can't recall any single game that needs more than 100 explosions playing at the same time because you have to remember this was all in one frame every single frame it was making over 100,000 explosions. That's really interesting. Okay. And okay, what can we do right now, right? I was just thinking of the particle emitter, but to be fair, I feel like explosions are also particles. Like, I, I, like I, I mean, an explosion is basically just a particle with some functions that can kill players, right? So I don't think that is a big difference. I guess, honestly, what we could do is we could maybe... Oh, you know, you know what we should do? We should, we should, we should try it with uh, user interface. Yeah, honestly, that's such a good idea. We, we should literally just try this with user interface. So yeah, let's actually do it exactly like this. I'll make one. I'll make a little frame, right? I'll make it 15 by 15 pixels. So this, it's basically like a little pixel, right? So, so what this is, it's it's user interface. And in case you don't know, somehow, it's just 2D stuff in a game. It's like a button, right? If a game has a button that you can click on and it like opens up the inventory. That's all user interface. And so what we can do then is um, we could just say new is going to be equal to, because again, we're, we're already going to have this frame inside of the starter GUI. I'm going to say game.players.local player wait for child player GUI, because every player has this thing called player GUI, and any user interface inside of the starter GUI folder will get cloned over to every single player uh, player's GUI. So player GUI, wait for child, uh, screen GUI, because we called it screen GUI, um, wait for child frame, and then we're going to clone uh, this frame. And so then all I'm really going to do is I'm just going to set its position, which is a udim2 value. And in, and in case you're confused, uh, udim2 is just x scale x offset, y scale y offset. So scale uh, means like it's scaled with the screen, offset and offset simply is like the pixel count. So for this, I'm going to use scale for both X and Y. And the scale goes from a 0 all the way to 1. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say math.random, um, let's say 0 to 100. And then I'm going to divide that by 100. So we're going to get a number between 0 and 1. Uh, the x offset will be 0. And then for the y scale, I'm going to do the same exact thing by saying math.random 0 to 100 uh, divided by 100. And then y offset will also be 0. And then the parent, instead of being the folder, will be the screen GUI. And actually something that I'll do real quick is I'll probably also just add an actual outline to this frame, just so we can kind of get a grasp of where this stuff is. And the other thing we could also do as well is we could uh, increase the Z index uh, of the frame. Because what Z index is, is it's effectively like the order in which the frame is drawn. So I'm just going to say um, local, or maybe we shouldn't do that because I I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure when you add a new frame, if, if it even if it has the same Z index as another like UI element, I believe it still gets drawn on top of that element. So I don't think we need to change anything about the Z index. So I don't think anything should be changed here. And uh, I still have count, but for now, I just um, set it to be multiplied by one. So we're not going to change count for now. I just want to see how this um, is going to work. Um, you know, instead of printing the folder, we are going to print this instead. We're going to print the number of children inside of the screen GUI. So let's play the game and let's see, okay? A bunch of dots. Damn, that actually looks pretty cool. Um, 200, 300. That looks pretty cool. Uh, I, li I like how this looks. Um, but yeah, I, I, it doesn't seem like it's lagging much out. I don't know. Everything everything still looks fine. So then, okay, let's um, let's, let's, let's multiply count by two, okay? Let's do it. Um, two, okay, count is now four. Yep, look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh, you know what's like, you know, you know a big problem? I just realized we can't even... Oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Nope, no, we gotta stop. We gotta stop. We gotta stop. Okay, 20... 23,000 frames. Very interesting. Okay, now it's 52,000 frames. So again, it's not letting me click anything because it, it's still like, you know, finishing up the game. Yeah, now it just, now it just gave me an error. It just locked me out again. What? I, I'm just, I'm confused because I, I didn't think user interface would lag out this much. I thought it was going to be the same as parts where like it takes like maybe, maybe like a hundred thousand or like a million to completely break my game. Because like, because I don't know, it's just like 2D element. Like I didn't think it'd be that bad, but it literally took less frames to crash my game than parts or explosions. So it was better with explosions than with user interface. I, I really didn't did not expect that for some reason. All right, well, I literally cannot do anything, but like, wow. Yeah, so from, from this testing, it seems like explosions, like, you know, particle stuff seem to be the least effective when it came to crashing the game. Parts were a close second, um, especially when you move them, right? So moving parts when they have to calculate this stuff literally caps out at like 2000, like I said. So that's it. That's a big no-no. Okay, there we go. Okay, disconnect. Okay, I can find... Okay, it just said disconnect. Okay, great. So I, I'm, I'm able to move my mouse around. Okay, good. But yeah, capped out at 52,000. Exhausted allowed execution time. That's crazy. You know what? In a weird way, I'll be honest, I kind of want to try this again. Okay, l l let me let me just see. If we remove the UI stroke, okay, will anything change? I'm just really curious. Let's see. I'm ready to click stop. I'm ready to click stop, okay? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to be very cautious here. Yeah, and it's still, it's still so slow to stop the game. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'll, let's just say hypothetically, because I, I don't want to crash my computer again. Uh, let, let's assume that UI strokes don't really so all right like i said the hierarchy here seems to be that explosions and particles seem to be the least like performance harming i guess i don't really know the terminology the second last are parts that aren't moving or aren't collidable so it seems like you could have a bunch of parts um that don't crash the game that don't cause lag that like i said aren't moving nor are accounting for collision then you have user interface which seemingly caps at like maybe 30k 40k um that's when it gets like really really laggy and the number one contender for crashing the game seems to be um and again there's a good amount of things that i haven't tested but it seems to be parts that have to constantly calculate their own physics their own position and in my case i had like a thousand parts do that all at the same time so that heavily contributed to the fact that like i said it canceled out at like 2000 parts so to answer the question of how long it takes to crash roblox or how easy it takes to crash roblox or whatever other clickbait title i had on the thumbnail the answer is uh 2000 moving parts or a million still parts or 52000 gui 
or um, an infinite amount of explosions. Because I don't know about you, but it seems like as long as you don't look at the explosion or you don't look at the particle, it doesn't affect your game at all, it seems like. So there you go, there's your answer. I hope you leave this video an enlightened individual ready to go subscribe to my channel leave a comment check out my roblox studio course now for only 40 dollars in uh, linked in the, in the pinned comment and the description and also go follow my instagram i have uh, pictures of like my pet pigeons or they're not really pets but like they we, they kind of fly to me and they like they eat food sometimes and then they fly away for like a, a day or so but I, I have some pictures so if you want to see those go ahead but yeah leave a comment you know uh, let me know how much this has impacted your life and changed your outlook on the world and relationships and love and uh, deeper connections and meaning and all of that stuff and once again we are back to basics thank you for watching